What's up my friends? Welcome to another video. I'm Rob Stewart and I'm here to help you get your skin and your overall health back on track. So a little context for those of you who are watching my channel for the skin health oriented content. Obviously this video is about rucking backpacks and has nothing to do with skin health, or does it? So one of the key ingredients is customizing your lifestyle, especially the amount of resistance training and movement you do on a daily basis. I use hiking and cycling and walking and rucking as one of my favorite approaches to moving the lymphatic system. So this is why I bring it up on this channel. For those of you who are new or for those of you who are just tuned in to hear about this backpack or this rucking sack, if you will, enjoy the video and I'm gonna just get straight into the content. Now your rucking pack is important, but the cool thing is you do not have to spend a ton of money. I'm gonna grab my bag and walk you through the things that you need in a rucking bag. You can just use a normal backpack, but you're gonna end up with a sore, sore lower back, and it really doesn't provide for you the main thing that you need. One second. So there's many different rucking sacks out there. There's four main things with a rucking backpack that you kinda have to have. Thing number one is the strap that goes around your waist here at the bottom. This is gonna bring the weight to your hips. It's gonna help support the weight of the pack and it's gonna allow the weight to stay close to your body. You want the weight close to your body so that it doesn't pull you in strange directions and you want things on the strongest parts of your body which are gonna be your hips and your back. Um, thing number two that you need in a rucking backpack is the top strap. This guy. So what happens a lot of times if you don't have this top strap is that when you are rucking around with this thing loaded with weight and you don't have this, these shoulder parts, the shoulder parts are gonna spread open and you're constantly gonna have to be pulling it forward and pulling it forward, which is a pain in the ass. And again, it doesn't allow your body to have the kinesiology that it needs to feel like the pack is a part of you and feel supported. When your pack is sloppy and falling off your shoulders, it's super uncomfortable and it makes the weight seem extremely heavy. And number three, another important aspect of a rucking backpack. This thing has a hard shell. So inside of it, it has has a solid core membrane in there. You can hear it, I can't pull it out. Some of them are metal, some of them are made of plastic, but it gives the whole backpack and the whole pack structure so that it can carry the weight. Again, these three parts all work together so that it stabilizes and is a part of your body. Those three things are very important. The fourth most important thing is you do want it to have several pockets so that you can add weight inside the backpack. And I'm gonna to get to what I do in a second. Um, also, I think it's a great idea for it to just be a functional pack. This thing has lots of little different places for me to put water bottles or put a knife or put whatever survival stuff I want if I'm rucking out in the wilderness. I also just use this as my backpack for when I'm on adventures. Um, the cool thing about this one is that I got it at Target of all places. And I got it way before I even knew what rucking was. I just knew I needed something with a solid membrane in it and the straps here and the straps here and plenty of pockets for my hikes and my outdoor adventures. The cost of this one was super cheap. It was like 45 bucks. And to be totally honest with you, I've been thrashing this thing and it is still holding up perfectly good. Now there are like military grade and lots of different rucking backpacks out there. If you do a simple Google search for a rucking backpack, you'll have plenty of options, but simply make sure that it has the membrane, they have steel ones and plastic ones, make sure it has the hip strap, make sure it has the chest strap, and make sure it's got plenty of pockets and power and room to hold enough things in it to give you some resistance and some weight in there. Here's what I do, super basic. So generally for me, when I'm rucking, I'm carrying with me at least 30 pounds is a light ruck for me and 100 pounds is a heavy ruck for me. So I stay in the 30 to 100 pound range. And I just use 
good old fashioned dumbbells. Thanks so much for watching today's video, you guys. Leave your comments and questions down below. Subscribe and share if you enjoy the content. Give it a thumbs up if you feel like it. If you don't, I don't blame you. All good. Have a good day. I'll be back with many more videos. Peace. Those of you who enjoyed this rucking content, I am gonna be putting out a video probably the end of the week or in two weeks about my 90 day rucking experience or experiment, if you will. I did 90 days of rucking, daily rucking. Um, I kind of did it both to get a little bit leaner and to experiment with what it would do to my knees and my joints and my hips and my leg strength. And the results are really strange and really kind of cool. And I'm gonna be sharing that video later on down the line. So if you like this one and you're new, stay tuned because I'm gonna be putting out a couple more videos with a rucking focus. Peace.